Hi, I'm Barb Fivey. Thanks for joining me for Joymakers Mixed Media Circles. Now, if you took the Escape Through Abstract Circles class, we're going to take it up to the next level on this one. If you didn't take that class, no problem. There is no previous experience required for this class. So, more media, more circles, all mixed up. Sound like fun? Let's get started. First, what exactly is mixed media? Mixed media refers to the visual art form that combines a variety of media in a single artwork. For example, if you draw in oil pastel, then paint over it with watercolor, and then some India ink, then chalk pastel, then glue on some newspaper, and maybe a little more chalk pastel. That's mixed media. Let's take a brief look at how it all got started. The use of mixed media began around 1912 with the Cubist collages and constructions of George Brock and Pablo Picasso. By cutting up and pasting household items to the canvas, these two artists really challenged the idea of what art is. At the time, they were seen as totally radical. By creating works like these, they changed the world of art forever. And as a result, today it is completely accepted that art can be made of anything or any combination of things. Isn't it interesting that this has been going on for more than a hundred years? Well, I still think there are plenty of exciting, interesting, crazy things to be done with mixed media. So my challenge to you is to see just how many combinations you can come up with. Here's a set of circles that I created. So I invite you to explore, to experiment, to leave aside any expectations, and I think you will be surprised at what you discover along the way. So what kind of supplies do you need for mixed media? Well, the options are almost endless. It really comes down to whatever it is you have at home. What I've got here to start is some paper. You'll need a piece of paper. Uh, I've got a lightweight bond paper. It, uh, that'll work in a pinch if you want to work with charcoal or markers or anything like that. But if you're working with paint or anything wet, you'll probably want something a little heavier. This is a Canson watercolor paper that's 140 pounds, so it's a little heavier. And what you'll want to do is, like I've done here, you'll want to grid your paper into squares. These are four by four inch squares. So whatever size squares your, your paper will accommodate. Anyway, let's look at the different media I have. I've got uh, oil pastels right here. I've got a piece of charcoal that I can try out. I've got watercolors. This is just a package of uh, Grumbacker watercolors. You can use the liquid ones if you have them. I've got some pencils, some colored pencils, and markers. I've got some fine ones that I haven't even tried yet. And then I've got just a bunch of Sharpies and highlighters and a real mishmash of markers in there. And then I've got some pastels. These are the dry pastels, chalk pastels. So we're going to try those out. I've also got India ink and uh, a palette that I can use that with, as well as some water for the watercolor and for the ink and for other things. I've also got some paper and I'm thinking about trying some collage in my mixed media. So just got a variety of types of paper, some scissors, a glue stick. You can use white glue if you have that at home, whatever you have at home. So for my acrylics, I've got just some basic acrylics here. They are simple, I don't have too many colors, but if you're going to use acrylics, you probably need a palette of some kind. Mine is a paper plate. You can use wax paper or a plastic lid if you have one. Then my mishmash of brushes. You can see I like pink. You can see there's a lot of pink dye on those brushes. Anyway, there's a real mishmash there of different sizes and shapes whatever you have at home will work just fine. 
And if you are using acrylic paint, you'll probably want a little spray bottle or just to keep an eye on the paint so that it doesn't dry out. So there's my little spray bottle. And finally, some paper towel. I know that's difficult to find these days, but if you do have a few pieces around, it helps you from getting too messy. So that should do it. Find whatever materials you have at home and we will try mixing them all together. I'm going to give you a little demo first on how to mix different types of media together just to give you some ideas. But I really want you to make your own rules. I want you to try things that I'm not even trying. And I think to keep in mind, the name of the game is to get lost in the process. When working with mixed media, you may want to work on many circles at once. If you paint something in watercolor or ink, you may want to let it dry before starting the next layer. I love working this way. You'll also notice that watercolor can blend chalk pastel. If you put down oil pastel first and then go over it with watercolor or ink, you'll find that the oil and the water do not mix. So you get this kind of cool effect where the oil resists the water. If you have wet layers that you want to dry faster, you can always use a blow dryer to just dry them out before adding the next layer. So one thing you might think about to make your decision making a little bit easier as you flow along, is to just simplify the color choices you make. I'm going to be using pink and yellow, maybe some blue and some purple, and of course black. I always add black because it adds drama. Now I've sped this video up, but I suggest you take your time. Enjoy the color, enjoy playing with all the choices that you have, building up your layers, moving from one circle to the next. Just take your time. It's like having many pots of soup on the stove at once. You can just move back and forth between them and just add here and add there and see how it all turns out. I'll give you a few things to think about while you're doing this. First of all, don't think. Just let your intuition lead you and just follow whatever brings you joy today. Take some risks. Maybe you have a belief about color that, you know, green and purple don't go together. Well, try putting them together and see where it happens. And whatever you do, don't worry about failure. Don't worry about the product or the finished piece. That will seize you up in the moment. And we want to stay in the moment. We want to just keep flowing. So invite failure. Try things. See what happens. Make a mess. Just muddle along and see where it takes you. Enjoy. Enjoy the scribbles and the squiggles and the splashing of paint and just the crazy things that you're doing. The getting silly and the listening to your heart, making decisions that just make you happy.
you know, something that can happen to the best of us is that inner critic sneaks in. And you might find that you're working and suddenly you start feeling like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, there's something not working here. Oh, I'm not sure what to do next. Well, I find the best thing to do at that point is something big. Pick up a bigger brush, go for a bold, bright color, stand up instead of sitting down, and make a bold move. Shake off that inner critic and stay in the fun zone. If you find yourself feeling weird and uncomfortable, embrace that feeling because that means you've stepped outside of your comfort zone and you're exploring and you're experimenting and it feels really uncomfortable, but that's where the new and the cool stuff is. So just keep going. So, can you ask yourself, when do I know when this is done? Well, that's a good question, and only really you know the answer to that. I find that once I've covered all the white space and I've really added a lot of different interesting elements, I usually can sort of back away and say, yeah, this looks done to me. But it is a pretty personal choice. And honestly, this process can go on a long time. So take whatever time you like, and I think the piece will tell you when it's done. Well, that was fun. Here's how my mashup of different mediums turned out. You know, I think you could go back and do this exercise over and over and over and you'd come up with new things every time. And that's what I love about it. Now it's your turn. Remember to relax, to breathe, to follow your intuition wherever it may take you. But most importantly, remember to enjoy the process of play. Nobody's watching. So go make some joy and I'll see you next time.